When I first got this Matrix X Saber 3 streamer, I was concerned because Matrix is a Chinese company that is, until recently, known for producing affordable DAX. For them to bring a $3,000 USD streamer to market, it needs to go way above and beyond than just sounding good. After all, good sounding affordable DAX streamers that measures as if their life depended on it are everywhere. $500 DAX that measure perfectly yarn. That is yesterday's news. In the $3,000-ish area, you have DAX like Inuis, Holomay, Denafrips, Lumen, Oralic, and so forth. So the competition is fierce. Unless this DAX blew me away, I don't think there's a place for it in today's market. So my first reaction powering up the unit was, okay, there's a bit of more clarity, but it does not blow away my more affordable sub-$1,000 DAX. How do you make a review on this? $3,000 is not pocket change, and I'd better set the correct expectations for this streamer. The last thing I want is people throwing eggs at me. You know, Thomas, I bought it, and it's not better than my $900 topping DAC. This actually happened with a person I lent it to. He told me my top, his topping D90 has more base than the Sabre 3. Now, for that reason, I've kept this streamer for at least eight months without reviewing it, and wanted to send it back many times. So what changed? No, Matrix did not deposit a few million dollars into my account. The turning point is when I started really using it with the upcoming Galleon TS20 Class A Solid State AM. That is when I realized most DAC today have a lot of detail, but there is a difference between resolution and detail. Now I'll elaborate on this later in the video. If I tell you now, half of you will drop off this video right away. From, I want to send this streamer back without a review to, man, this is the streamer I've been using daily for the last few months. There is a story to tell. So, my audio buddies, today, let me share with you my experience with the Matrix X Saber 3. Now, I just want to take a moment to thank Apos Audio for sending me this unit for review. If you plan on purchasing any Matrix or Topping products, yeah, please check them out. It will indirectly support this channel. And no, they also did not deposit a million dollars into my bank account. Now, the Sabre 3 streamer uses the ESS ES9038 Pro DAC chip. So you don't need an external DAC. The build and design quality will definitely catch your attention. Don't be fooled by the small size, the unit weights 3.5 kg. And not one single affordable DAC, which is over 30 of them, I've tried, is as solidly built as this Sabre 3. You can send someone to the hospital if you throw the streamer at them. It does support most music formats under the sun, and it can use Rune. You can connect to it either with an Ethernet cable or by Wi-Fi. Now, notice there is no antenna. Now, according to the website, they wanted to give it an elegant look, so they hit the antenna. Now, looking at the back of the streamer, you have all the inputs and outputs you ever need. Finally, the top of the DAC is made of tempered glass, giving it a premium feel. So, let's start with the negatives. You can use Tidal Connect, Spotify Connect, and Rune, but it does not support a few other streaming services natively. To use Kobos, for example, I had to use the Matrix app or a third-party app like Bubble PNP. Next, in their attempt to make the Xsaber 3 more elegant, they had to use a very small touchscreen. Well, I tell you, after you use the affordable Eversolo DMP A6 streamer with a beautiful intuitive touchscreen, the screen on the Sabre 3 looks like it's made for toddlers. Sure. The Sabre 3 is more sleek, but if I have to use a magnifying glass to see the cover art, well, you know, I would rather not have the cover art. Menu nav navigation is not the most intuitive. There's a bit of a learning curve. Next, the overall sound profile of this DAC reminds me of most of the affordable DACs from Asia. You know, like if you hear a Macintosh, you can say, ah, 
the Macintosh sound, especially the older Macintosh. If you listen to a Meitner DAC, the mid-range realism will catch your attention right away. True, this matrix talk and detail will catch your attention right away, but a lot of affordable DAC from Asia have amazing detail too. So how does it sound? Sparkling top end, clear and transparent, neutral wish, fast, detailed, good 3D sound stage, dynamic. Basically, I can take any random review of any DAC from Asia and use the same vocabulary to describe this DAC. I would even say for some people in the system, they may not even hear a difference between this DAC and the affordable ones. But let me be clear, okay? I gotta be careful here. I'm not saying that person cannot hear a difference. I'm saying in that person's system, there's almost no difference. I'll elaborate later on. Funny, the top end is slightly tilted up, just a little bit. So if your current system is on the borderline of being bright, the stack might have the danger of pushing it over. All right, so enough with the negatives. Then in this case, why buy the Saber 3? Why not just get any affordable Asia DAC? I bet you can easily find many that measures better than this. Okay, let's move on to the positives. So remember I said my first impression was that it sounds, its sound profile is very similar to any sub $1,000 DAC. Now, my friends felt the same and they tried it without thinking much about it. Now, what caught everyone by surprise is when I go around and start doing serious A-B tests against those DAC. That is where people notice within a few seconds that this DAC sounds better than all the other affordable DAC. Just like me, my audio buddies thought it was a good DAC, but nothing special. However, whenever I get together with them to do an A-B test, as I mentioned, within a few seconds, they can tell this DAC is a level up in almost every category. Now, the DACs I A-B tested against were the Gusto R26, A26, the new EverSolo DMP A6 Dreamer that everyone and the dogs are talking about, the new SMSF 100 EX, the old Matrix Element I, the new Matrix Mini Pro, and so forth. This DAC always comes out top in resolution, fluidity, lack of glare, and dynamic contrast. So let's talk about resolution. Let's start with that. For me, there's a difference between resolution slash density and detail. Detail. Every well-measuring DAC has it, whether affordable or not. It is no longer exclusive to the high-end world. That is one reason why I always say Today's affordable DAC can rival yesterday's high-end DAC. So to understand why I'm so focused on resolution, I need to quickly give you a sneak peek at the upcoming Galeon Class A Solid State Amplifier. So inside every amp, there are capacitors that will affect the sound. Usually a lot amps will use a dollar, two dollar capacitors. The higher-end amps will use $30 capacitors per channel. The upcoming Galeon uses $200 capacitors per channel, and that gives me 10% more resolution. I know it's kind of stupid that, come on, just for 10% more resolution, I pay 10 times the price. But once you hear the new Galleon with the $200 capacitors instead of the $20 capacitor, it is hard to go back. So what happens when you pair the Matrix Sabre 3 with an amp that has God-level resolution? The other day, my nephew, who is not an audiophile, dropped by. He sat down and he listened, and within a few minutes, no, within a minute, he said, Hey, uncle, I can hear the vocal cords of the singer. The clarity is insane. Now, my definition of resolution might not be the right one, but in this case, let me define it this way, okay? Resolution is a bit like micro detail. When the singer changes breath, you will catch that faint breathing with no effort. When the musician pulls on the violin, you don't hear just the sound produced by the violin, but you also hear it and feel the vibration and the drag of the bow. When an amp doesn't have enough resolution, instead of feeling the resistance of the string, you feel the musician pulling on the string smoothly. Sounds good, but you are missing that texture. Texture is the key. Now, when a drummer hits a drum, you can hear the vibration of the skin of the drum. That is only if you have a lot of resolution. So now adding all this up will give you a greater sense of realism. Part of the reason I was using the Matrix Saber 3 a lot when voicing the new Galleon M is because this DAC has enough resolving power to bring out all those textures. So why did I bring this Galleon amp up? It is because 
If you're using an M that doesn't have enough resolution and you pair it with the Matrix Saber 3, you will not get to hear its true potential and will easily write it off as ah, just another glorified sub-1000 DAC in the fancy casing, as some of you would say, stink oil. You see, sub-1000 dollar DAC is detail, but relatively speaking to the Saber, the sub-1000 dollar DAC detail feels artificial, while the Saber X detail is more natural. Now, this is interesting because whenever I describe this to my buddy at my place, after listening to both, they have this aha moment. Ah, yes, that's it. So in short, the more resolving your amp is, the more you will hear the differences. So let me tell you about my audio buddy, Mr. Kanta. I lent him the Saber 3, uh, and I remember a few days later, he brought it back and said, yeah, it's okay, but for three grand, whatever. And um, mind you, at the time, he had the Matrix Element I, which is the model below the, this one at half price. He did not really A-B test, but rather went by his memory. So one day I brought over the new Galileo amp to test with his full Kyle Sopra 2 speakers and audio research reference 6. Now just those two components with the cables are like 50 grand. All this plug into a $1,000-ish Matrix Element i DAC. Now Mr. Kanta refuses to spend money on DACs because his argument is this. I buy a high-end DAC today, next year a budget DAC will beat it. So he's waiting for DAC technology to mature. Now this time, with a serious A-B test, he was completely blown away because now the difference is night and day. As I said, the problem with this Matrix Saber 3 streamer is unless you A-B test it, and of course you must have a resolving system, you might not see what it is capable of doing. Now the whole discussion on resolution is interesting. Now if you look at the Klipsch RF7 III, which is an amazing, amazing, amazing speaker, even compared to the Klipsch 4K4. The Klipsch RF7 will destroy the 4K4 when it comes to bass, not even a competition. But the 4K4 mid-range resolution is significantly better than the RF7, and just because of that, there's no clear winner when comparing both speakers. But once again, you'll only notice it when doing an A-B test. Anyway, a video for another day. So the other day, Dennis dropped by. Now he borrowed this Matrix Saber 3 before and one of his friends who's tried it said, you know his topping D90 sounds better because of more bass. So I let him listen to this Matrix at my home with the Patos Kratos, 10 grand, that integrated amp. And he was confused because he did not find it lacking bass at all. It is refined and he was impressed. And I think the moral of the story is this, if it does not sound wow at your home, it might be more of a question of synergy. So the next strength of the streamer, it has this fluidity and absence of glare that you don't find in affordable DACs. Now, I don't mean smooth in the sense that it is rolled off, but the edges are definitely more polished, not to the point of R2R DACs, but relatively speaking, more than the affordable DACs. But make no mistake, this is not a layback DAC. Next, the dynamic contrast is good. The swing from lows to high is fast enough that it is not a boring DAC to listen to. I would say it is on the more exciting side. Now, once again, you need an amplifier that not only has good resolution, it also needs good dynamic contrast to be able to benefit from the better dynamic contrast of this DAC. The other day I noticed when I plug in the Gusto R26 directly to the Galeon Solid State M, Although it still sounds very, very good, you can tell it's just a bit more constrained in dynamics and resolution. Now, if you have nothing to compare to, I tell you, man, the Gusto R26 with the new Galeon M, end game, done for many people. But once you A-B test against the Matrix Saber, you see the Gusto R26 is the one that's holding back the amp's performance. So very important if, to do A-B tests. Now, I was curious if it can compete with the super expensive DAC or streamers. I A-B tested against a few, for example, the Meitner MA3, you know, about 12 grand, and the Exosound E82 with an aftermarket linear power supply, probably around 8 grand also. As good as the Matrix is, when compared to the Meitner, yeah, the Meitner sounds more analog, while the Exosound E28 has more transparency and other things. So although the Matrix has no problem beating the affordable DAC, 
it is not at the level of higher end DAC, which, you know, is to be expected. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is to set the correct expectations. I remember a subscriber who has a Matrix Saber told me, man, he wished it was more refined. So I was paying careful attention to the refinement of this DAC. I also made a point to ask my friends to come over to listen to see is it refined enough. Every person I asked was like, oh, there's no problem with the refinement. Later, I found out that the, the subscriber who wished it was more refined was comparing to an MSB DAC. You know, those $20,000 DAC. Man, I felt like smacking him on the head. So please keep your expectations in check. So to wrap it up, this DAC actually has replaced my own Exosound E28 as my reference DAC for the last few months because I was using it to voice the upcoming Galleon Solid State M. So I'll tell you another story. You know, I'm a big fan of Macintosh. At my home right now, I have five Macintosh pieces. Recently, I got my hands on the $7,000 Macintosh C26002 preamp with a built-in DAC. So every time when I get a chance, I will let my audio buddies AV test it against the Saber streamer, right? Saber streamer versus Macintosh C2600. And 100% of the time, it's always the same. Everyone say when using the matrix, it is like a veil has been lifted. The clarity and transparency just went to the next level. 100% of my audio buddies prefer the matrix over the Macintosh. Of course, some of you might say, oh, Thomas, man, it is impossible that the Matrix Sabre 3 can beat the $7,000 Macintosh. Yeah, I guess if you're looking for smoothness, then you have a case. However, if you're looking for clarity and transparency, but without sounding harsh and bright, the Sabre X is definitely worth additioning. My only advice is don't jump to a conclusion with it after five minutes. Live with it for a while. And I think Apple's audio with them, you can return it if you don't like it. So you'll take your time to really test this stack and it might be the higher end streamer that you've been looking for. My friend, Mr. Kanta is definitely looking for one right now to replace his Matrix Element I. All right guys, till next time.